they said, that's mission. Man, and they're right. That's mission. Mission from extraterrestrial, from God, through Jesus Christ to us. And as he says here, we've been given that talent to minister in mission to each other. All right, this is just a quick review of what we did last night. Um, notice, just notice a few highlights from this verse, because otherwise you won't know where we're at today and we want you to be with us. Christians are what? New creations. My of this verse is, if any man be a Christian, he's a new creation. And that's not doing any harm to the original or to God's word. That's what it's saying. All right. Old things. Now, what are the old things? Philosophy of life. Now, philosophy of life. Is there God? Is there no God? Is there creation? Is there a creator? Is it evolution? Was it a big bang? All that kind of stuff. Determines our lifestyle and our behavior. But all things now, when we know Jesus Christ and you, our beliefs and our attitudes and our outlook, and what did Paul say? Where did he say all things that are new come from? From God. The NIV puts it very plainly. The all things that are new are extraterrestrial. <laughs> They're not thought up here. Since sin, are they? No. Everything, all things are new. They're from God. All right. This word reconcile means, I found this in the Webster's Dictionary, it means an agreement. I thought that was very good. It's an agreement. It's an agreement between two people for a restored relationship, friendship. You can't go on a mission unless you've got a friend that's sending you. God is the friend. And the young people were very clever last night to cotton onto that. We've been given the ministry of friendship and of reconciliation, of restored friendship. We ought to be each other's friends. God is ours. And then we're given the word of reconciliation and we had a little thing last night. We said, that's the ET handbook. And the ET handbook's what, John? Yeah. You're right. All right, now listen. Some of you have the message. I have the message. I'm glad my brother had the message. Paraphrase of scripture. It's magnificent. Look, I'm going to read it. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 20. What we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start. Is new, is created new. The old life's gone. The new life virgin just like a mushroom comes up to full bloom in a few hours overnight. Look at it. All this comes from God who settled the relationship between us and Him and then He called us to settle our relationships with each other. Uh -huh. There's the rub, eh? The ministry of reconciliation. That's what it's all about. Otherwise you're not a Christian. God put the world square with Himself through the Messiah giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he's doing. Oh, that's reach out with hope, isn't it? That's reach out with hope. We've got the privilege of telling everybody what God's doing. We're Christ reps. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. Hey, that's pretty strong stuff, isn't it? That's us. That 98 won't be any good unless we, we work on those couple of lines. We're speaking for Christ himself now and I couldn't fit it on the one, the one, uh, sorry, I couldn't fit it on the one overhead, but you get the message and read the rest of it, it says, what? Become friends with God, he's already your friend. I cut it down because I couldn't put it on, but the message says it better. Become friends with God because he's already your friend before you knew him. And unless we understand what the young people had last night and came to grips with as they talked about it, the mission will be a flop. 
John. Oh, wait a minute. I saw I've got one here. I was going to ask you for yours. Something really special today. Stephanie McGee's birthday on the 17th. Sean Johnson's on the 20th. And Bye Codling on the 21st. No, you didn't hear me straight. It's not the 21st. It's on the 21st. Yeah. Is she here today? No. Okay. And she'll be 78. Now, we're going to do it differently today. Johnny, I would like you to come up and read a verse. Now, young people, we're going to be looking at the board, so maybe you'd like to come and transfer to these seats just here for the moment, and I'll call you up when I want you to read and use this mic, okay? So you can see the screen, because we're going to use the fair bit. Can we come and sit just over here, wherever you like us to hear? Now, Johnny's going to read a scripture for us today. Before he does, we'll have a little prayer. But what we're on about is a vital relationship and friendship with our God, so that we can accomplish the mission he's given us to to do. The acts have got that word today, to do. They're using it a lot about everything out of Englishmen wouldn't say it the way they do, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it to others. We're going to do mission to one another. So listen to see if you can hear it this morning and what we've said and what we're going to say. Let us pray. When I've finished saying a little prayer, Trevor, you switch on to the other mic. God, we want to hear you today. We want to hear you from the word. We want to hear what you're talking about. We don't want to battle in tongues today, Lord. We want the message clearly. Lord, we're glad to see so many of our young men and women here today. And boys and girls. Help them to hear you speak for them today and this week so they can minister to each other. For Jesus' sake, amen. Psalm 19, open it up. Now you should be all be able to say it from when you're at MVs and JMVs because it was one of the things you had to do in the friend class, I think. Learn Psalm 91. I can see myself 19. I can see myself out in the back of the old chicken coop at the elders' house learning. Now, you've got to read it. Whatever version you've got, as Johnny reads it. Thank you, Johnny, in a loud voice. Verses 1 to 6. 1 to 6. Okay, listen what David says. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky displays what his hands has made. One day tells a story to the next. One night shares the knowledge with the next, without talking, without words, without voices being heard. Yet, the sound has gone out into the world. He has set up a tent in the heavens for the sun, which comes out of a chamber like a bridegroom, like a champion that's eager to find its race. It rises from the ends of the heavens and it circles around the other. Nothing is hidden from its head. What's it talking about, Johnny? It's talking about God's glory, everything that is made in, the, in David's sword. And um, I've got a little Bible here that's really small and all that, and things are getting smaller, but our God is huge. Thank you. Yes. And, and God's word is told all over the place. Mm. Very good. Something beautiful happened this week. You may sit down, Johnny. There was heat and scotch mists. I said to May, oh, the rain's here. She said, ah, didn't get past the leaves. Go look under the cabbage tree. There was mist. There was heat. One morning I woke up I couldn't see any of the neighbours. It was fog. sun. There was breeze and there was wind. And then the general rain came and we had it yesterday and last night, didn't we? What did that tell you? What does that tell you? What's that got to do with, with Psalm 19? God at work. Isn't that what it is? 
God is still there. I said to some ladies yesterday down in the shop that do the coffee, I said, oh, God's not dead. They said, what do you mean? I said, he hasn't forgotten New Zealand. They said, what are you talking about? I said, it's raining. Oh, yeah, you're right. He hasn't forgotten us. Yeah, it's God. We've got to tell people it's God. I like what you said, Johnny. You said his character. His character. I love seeing God at work with his talents. Here in in Psalm 19, we see revelation of God and his love and his character by what? Nature. What did you see of God's love in the rain? What did you see of God's love in the mist and in the sun and the breeze? Was there any of God's love in that? Can we talk through our hats when we say it displays God's loving character? Does it? You can't hear God, you can't see Him. You can see Him work. And it's because He loves us that He sent the rain back, isn't it? I'm glad all the fellas on LD know we're wrong. They said we wouldn't get rain late or May. You notice how they brought the date back now. They're feeling a bit of shame. It's remote information, the first few verses of the psalm. Remote information about God. But some, some other kind of information that it gives us too, it displays to us what? Supernatural power. Every language and every religion, even the pagans admitted that it was supernatural power, didn't they? But admit that it was Yahweh, no. So, nature doesn't really display to us God's words that tells us about him in picture form but it does tell us that the God whoever he is is what creator that's what we have in the first few verses of Psalm 19 now we have a few more verses who's reading yes thank you Joe you read the next few verses take out your Bibles yes you've got verses 7 to ten in a loud voice and don't be afraid. No one's going to fight you. There you are. All right, get close to it. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and honeycomb. Thank you. What have we got now? What's the psalmist changed to now? Pardon? Come on, tell me. Is he still talking about nature? What's he transferred to now? Right. In the first part he said God is revealed in his creation. Now he's saying he's revealed in the law. Now the word law here just means God's word, God's communication to us. God has communicated to us in writing. And here we find that his writings and his statutes and his testimonies describe him. Describe God. But if you notice carefully, very carefully, Psalm 19 from now on describes us. Uh -huh. It describes us and God. And it shows that there's a difference because it says God's writing what? Cleanses and it what? Converts and it what? And it changes and it what? It redeems. Now, nature can't do that. It can introduce you to God, but it can't change you. It is only God's written word that will change a man's thoughts and a young person's thoughts so that they, with God's power, try to line up with what God wants to be his friend because he wants to be your friend. So God's written word is given to us
to give us a real personal written glimpse of God. Now it says there, the law, and just means the writings of the Lord, the scriptures, all right, the Torah are meant for the Jews. It's perfect and it converts. Now young people, I want to say to you, just as television converts, just as bad stories convert the mind, right? The Bible converts too. Convert means to change. It changes us into God's thinking. All right, the testimony here is talking about the witness of God, the written witness, is what? Trustworthy. And it makes us wise. All right? Then he said the statutes are right and they give us joy. Now, we, which time, there's no time to go in. We could talk about each of these every day, but in the, in the Hebrew Bible, it's beautifully. One, two, three. This does this, does, this is this, this does that. One, two, three, just like we've got it here. The testimony, trustworthy, makes wise. Statutes, right, give joy. It's beautifully set up in the poetry there of the Old Testament. All right? He said here, he said the commandment, which means it's God's orders. You know, you go down to the park and it said, no dogs allowed in this park by order the clerk of the Shire Council. By order just means by commandment. And commandment means by order, the rule. The rule, the right rule, the right order. And God's commandment, not just the Ten Commandments, but all His commands, His commands to know and love Him. His command to read the Word. His revelation in writing is pure and it gives light. The fear of the Lord is clean and it endures. Now, what's the fear of the Lord? It literally means to the Hebrew, to respect and reverence and worship. Worship cleans. It's an old word that's got a different meaning today. But a little bit of fear wouldn't hurt, would it, Aunt Lucy? Fear of missing out on living with our God, our friend who loves us so much. We ought to be afraid of that. But it really means to worship and to reverence. His judgments are true and just. They warn and they reward. Beautiful, isn't it? Can I have something else here? Yes, here it is. It got lost somewhere yesterday. It was supposed to be an overhead. The lady put a paper in and I just found it this morning. I checked them all last night. Lucky she was down there having a wine last night because she forgot the difference. I mean, I rang her up and I asked her and she was still there. She stopped having a wine. I said, good, keep drinking your wine because I'll be back in 10 minutes. But I didn't check them out last night because we had last night's meeting and that was your last day over here. All right. Reno, you come up and read verses 11 through complete that session yesterday the chapter. Yeah. Okay. By them is your servant warned, and keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Thank you, Renai. Notice the purpose of nature is to introduce us to God, the Creator, young people. And the purpose of the written word is to teach us 
that we need to be changed. We need to be changed. If we're going to do his mission, we have to change. We have to not only be friends of God, we have to be friends with each other or we're not his friend. And notice what he said here, cleanse me from my secret faults. And you've all got secret faults. And some of them aren't secret anymore because you've told the pastor that they're secret. Pray that they don't have dominion over us so that we will be innocent from great transgression. But there's another revelation. I want you to turn me with me, all of you, to Hebrews verse chapter 1 and verse 1. Let's look at Hebrews uh, chapter 1 and verse 1. There is another revelation. God has done all he can to try and get through to us. Notice the title of the sermon. God has done everything to try and get through to us. Nature, the written word, now he's done something else. And I've called it, and you haven't got the overhead, I'm sorry, it's revelation uh, in the flesh. Revelation in the flesh. God who in different times and in different ways spoke to us in the past, what? By the fathers and by the prophets. But he has in these last days spoken to us by his what? Son. God in person, God in nature, young people, speaks to us, but you just might hear him, many don't. But God speaks to us in his written word, in his love letter to us. He's just dying to be our friend. He's done all he can to try and get through to our minds to make us friend. And he came in his son. And the first of his son, as brother, as priest, as sacrifice, as redeemer, and as king. Does Psalm 19 mean anything different for you today than it did yesterday? It's beautiful. Read it every day this week. God's extended himself to try and be your friend because he wants to give you the power to change. Because unless we change, we can't be his friend and he's just, he's just hanging out to be our friend and for us to be real friends with each other. going to ask us to do something. Just for two minutes, listen to care. Once again, once again this week, we'd just like you to invite you just to pair off a twos or threes. And um, we want especially that you break from perhaps each other and invite one of the young people to come and pray with you or to pray, and to pray for them. Okay, so if you'd just like to move quickly and just invite you, well, as someone's child, one of the youth, to come and pray with you, that will be just wonderful. And then the pastor will do the benediction. Thank you. Do you hear what Gillian's saying? Let's move quickly. An old church member, come and take some of these young people and pray with them on the edge. We haven't got all day. Let's do it together. Come on. We want to pray for them. They need our prayers this week because they want to really know God as their friend. Fix this mic off, please. Still a couple more young people on the front seat here need an older person. Don't deserve them.
we are in dead earnest with God to do all our best to help you to be his friend. Because what your parents fail often to do, what the pa pastor fails to do, what the elders often fail to do, Jesus will not fail if you keep in touch with him in nature, in his word, and in the person of his son. They're your friend. And they have supernatural power. They are ET. They're extraterrestrial. Their word is extraterrestrial. We're just saying it's inspired and it's empowered to change you into friend and to do mission. Now we're going to sing about it this morning in 309. And we're going to sing the first and the last. Just where we're seated. Just remain seated.
God bless each young person that stood today and each other young person as they endeavour with your word to make you friend with them. Bless them this week and help us as we minister to them. For Jesus' sake, Amen. You may not like what I'm going to say. Be kind for today. Deacons, if you want to go home to dinner, leave it to me to pull the blinds and to lock the door. I will not leave any windows or doors open. But there's a lot of people said to me lately, we want the curtains left. We want to meditate about our God and the meeting and with each other. If you feel you want to go, you just go. And deacons, if you have to go, we understand, but we will do your work faithfully and close up God's sanctuary well. God bless you all. Thank you for being here today. It's been lovely. And young people, tomorrow night at Johnson's at 7. But have something to eat before you come because there's no meal there. Okay? God bless you all and have a lovely